worth paying attention. Elon Musk posting that FSD version 14, coming soon, will be better than human, for sure. But he doesn't know if it'll be 10 times better. Maybe 2 to 3. However, version 15 has a shot at being 10 times. Now, better presumably means safer, as in measured by accidents per mile. Better than human, for sure, is a massively important milestone especially when it comes to regulatory approval for FSD slash autonomy slash robo taxis operating legally throughout the US and the rest of the world. Elon Musk, very confident, didn't say probably or likely or possibly or maybe, but for sure version 14 will be better than human. Now today, I would argue that FSD seems to be better than humans in most instances, but still around edge cases occasionally will make an error hence still requires supervision. Two to three times better than human would be a massive leap forward. But what Tesla really needs to get to is that V15, give or take 10 times. Sometime between version 14 and 15, the Tesla Robus Axi floodgates will open. There's no reason not to scale as rapidly as possible, as widely as possible in as many major cities and then eventually minor cities and then even towns as you can. Once you're somewhere between that two to three all the way up to 10 times safer than human threshold. While we're talking about Elon Musk, Tesla, and AI in general, Colossus 2, which is going to be built by XAI, which Tesla investors will soon be able to vote on whether or not Tesla should invest in a slice of XAI, and anyone who votes no <laughs> should definitely have their head examined. He writes, Colossus 2, built by XAI, will be the world's first gigawatt plus AI training computer. Now, just really roughly, when we're talking about a gigawatt plus, a gigawatt is roughly enough energy to power, give or take, three quarters of a million homes. So, I mean, just think about this. Bonkers. Someone replies, Grok 5 is going to be insane. Elon says, it has a non-trivial chance of achieving AGI. XAI is close to having all the pieces in place. And you know, by the way, the missing piece, other than obviously plenty of training compute, the real world data. That Tesla happens to have been collecting over the last give or take a decade and continues to collect 24-7 with their vehicle of 7, 8-ish million Tesla vehicles on roads. By the way, any company wishing to solve AGI will require the real-world data, yet only one company is collecting real-world data at even close to the scale Tesla is. Do the math. Meanwhile, the narrative that Elon is distracted continues and will never end, despite the track record and results proving otherwise. But this time is different. Kevin O'Leary has some thoughts. Is he getting pulled in too many different directions? Does Elon Musk need to do what his, some of his Tesla shareholders want and start focusing? Well, uh, for anybody else, I'd say yes, but not for him because you have the history of executional skills. You know, the successes of so many different mandates, diverse mandates, whether... Turns out Kevin O'Leary has a brain. I just used it. I made a very valid point. The fact that Elon Musk has a multi-decade track record of producing incredible results across multiple domains while juggling many complicated projects simultaneously means the onus is on anybody who claims all oh, this time is different to prove why a multi-decade track record isn't a substantial enough data set, I get it, data because AI, to reasonably hypothesize that just because you couldn't handle it and you may be distracted, the guy who's proven over multiple decades that he can juggle multiple things at the same time and produce extraordinary results across multiple domains is in fact going to continue doing what he's been doing for multiple decades, motherfucker. Credit to Kevin O'Leary here for pointing out the obvious facts. Whether it be SpaceX or Starlink or Tesla or the, the, you know, some of the robotic projects he's involved in, um, even this restaurant he lit up in L.A. looks yeah. like it's going to be wildly successful. Yeah, the Hollywood diner. You know, it's sort of like anybody else couldn't do it, but he can. But I've, I've also learned something else recently that I hadn't thought about. In able to do the things that he does, it's not... It, his real talent is choosing the people that have these mandates at, at the head of these companies, because mm -hmm. I've recently been involved. This is also extremely true. I'm kind of surprised that it's only just occurred to Mr. O'Leary here, but as I've said in the past, the best and brightest engineers in the world all want to work for Elon Musk. They survey graduating engineering students year after year in the US. Where do you want to work? Top companies. Number one and number two for, what, the last decade plus? Tesla and SpaceX. It's not a coincidence. It's not just that. Musk is able to not only recruit incredible top 0.1% talent, but to get unbelievably extraordinary results out of these people who are willing to work a relentless, stupid number of hours in addition to be ultra productive during those hours, dedicate themselves entirely to the mission and produce extraordinary results. It's not just his ability to recruit and retain mission-focused talent, the best in the world, but to get the most out of them 
and for those people working for Musk to want to deliver the goods. The dude collectively across multiple companies employs well over 100,000 people. It obviously starts at the top, but it's the talent that Musk is able to recruit, retain, motivate, and incentivize to produce extraordinary results to empower, to do the heavy lifting. This is one of those, you can't put this in a spreadsheet, but extremely valuable attributes of not just Tesla, but all Musk-led companies. A couple of great points here from Kevin O'Leary. In discussing some, you know, mutual opportunities with some of these companies and our companies, uh, his guys are not normal guys. Um, and I mean that there's women involved too. That this SpaceX CEO is a woman. She's unbelievable. I mean, but his team are not normal bureaucracies. Mm. They don't work the traditional way a large company works. They are given very short mandates. Could be 90 days, could be you know, 180 days to get a massive project done. And they don't let anything get in the way. And if you can't work at their pace, they'll just roll over you. Another great point. True and important. The people working for these companies are built different. And if you attempt to get in the way of them achieving a goal, they will roll the fuck over you. On this, I can certainly relate. So it's it's not quite... I mean, I've, I've done business with a lot of companies. Yeah. And a, and a lot of large companies. And I've never seen anything like this. And the reason... He, he's going to win, in my view, and why I, I think investing in his companies, as long as he's keeping this mandate in place, is, for lack of a better words, they don't f around. Yeah, they just do it. They just do it, yeah. and and they they tell the governments that they're going to work with. If you can't keep pace with us, we're just not going to work with you. Yeah, we're going to go somewhere else, and it's it's almost refreshing to see this because, um, you know. Uh, I, I work with a lot of governments and a lot of mandates in a lot of countries, whether it's in Europe or in the UAE you know, or whatever. I've never quite seen anything like this. And the only reason I'm confident that it works is it has worked and you can see the results. That's why I'm kind of disappointed he's not doing the doge thing still. I mean, if, if they'd let him continue to just doge it with the government, it, it would have been good. It would have been, I mean, I know there's a lot of controversy and all that, but... If, if you'd see, if you saw it and see it the way I see it, mm. you're under the covers, so to speak, uh, these guys, uh, you know, it, it's, it's like that, I've said this analogy before, that famous line in the movie, who are those guys? Like, they just keep riding over the sand dunes coming at you. <laughs> they're, just, they're just amazing. And so I say, um, I think Tesla's going to be, uh, a, you know, I'm an investor, I mean, I just sit back and wait. I think there's a lot of robotic technologies, there's a lot of taxis. You know, I don't focus on any one quarter, and I really don't look at the stock because the roller coaster is insane. But, you know, I bought that stock before it even split. Funnily enough, I also bought Tesla stock before it split, and then after it split, also then after it split again, and still buying when I've got available cash. Didn't expect I'd be agreeing so much with Kevin O'Leary today, but he also pointed out he doesn't look at this quarter versus next quarter he's just buy hold sit back and relax makes two of us and now i have a question if you are retarded and do not take any personal responsibility for your life your circumstances the way things are panning out for you and you're a very unhappy person what's the best possible way to cope and the actual answer is to look internally figure out why make some positive changes set some goals and start taking action to improve your life and your circumstances. But of course, that requires work. So what's an alternative? It's a lot easier. And that, of course, is to start posting and or moderating on Reddit. Decide that billionaire bad, what things for nothing. And attack, deride, and diminish those who have accomplished extraordinary things and achieved extraordinary results by applying themselves, working their dick off, and sacrificing things along the way. Q Alexandria, occasional cortex on Elon Musk. Elon Musk is not a scientist. He is not an engineer. He is a billionaire con man with a lot of money. He does not have this kind of good background. Elon I called it right. If you hate yourself, you hate work and effort, you want everything for free, you see somebody who's worked his brains out, chewed glass, stared into the abyss, sacrificed a lot, done extraordinary things, claim he's not an engineer, and suggest pejoratively that he's got a lot of money, therefore he must be bad. Not only did this absolute see you next Tuesday imply tacitly that billionaire equals bad, she called Elon Musk a con man. Now, to be honest, I don't actually know whether Occasional Cortex believes what she says or just realises that there is a captive audience of self-hating non-starters who aren't willing to put in any effort to build a life they want. 
who just want everything given to them for free, who will gobble up everything she says relating to billionaire bad and the biggest billionaire is Elon, therefore Elon is the biggest bad. There's a lot of people out there, a lot of very depressed, lonely, adult virgins, men exclusively, who no matter what Elon Musk is involved with, attacked a guy. He's not a real engineer, he's fake. Just they're everywhere. It's a coping mechanism for people who do not feel good about themselves and hate the way their life looks and rather than trying to figure out why and make some positive changes and take action, we'll just rather project outward and cope because it's easier and requires zero effort. If AOC is just playing the game here, she's done a great job because the best way possible to cope with somebody who's produced life results that you're envious of is to assume the only possible way they achieve this was through dishonest and unethical practices and I'm not those things, therefore that's why I hate myself and hate my life. Elon's a con man, that's the only reason that he's been able to do all these things because he's a bad person, I'm not a bad person. That explains why my life's shit. Cope harder, loser. How unbelievably insulting for occasional cortex to suggest that Elon isn't an engineer. You try to bring the guy down, having transformed multiple industries across multiple decades, employing over 100,000 people, doing an enormous amount of good for the world. I saw this posted on X. So here's a quote from John Carmack. By the way, if you don't know who that is, depends how long you've been around the block. Remember Doom? Actually going back even further, Wolfenstein 3D, or further forward in time, Quake. Carmack is unquestionably an absolute gigabrain, an engineer, I will add. And he also founded an aerospace company roughly 25 years ago. He said on Elon, Elon is definitely an engineer. He is deeply involved with technical decisions at SpaceX and Tesla. He doesn't write code or do CAD today, but he is perfectly capable of doing so. We have another quote, this time from Robert Zubrin, who is a, wait for it, aerospace engineer, who writes or said, When I met Elon, it was apparent to me that although he had a scientific mind and he understood scientific principles, AOC has left the chat, he did not know anything about rockets, nothing. That was in 2001. By 2007, he knew everything about rockets. He really knew everything in detail. You have to put some serious study in to know as much about rockets as he knows now. This doesn't just come from hanging out with people. Eric Berger has written a book or two on SpaceX. Elon is the chief engineer in name and reality. We'll start skipping through some of these a bit quicker. You can pause and read the full thing if you want. Another one, Elon is both the chief executive officer and chief technology officer of SpaceX. So of course he does more than just some very technical work. Goes on to say that he's involved, really involved, hands-on involved in the actual design and engineering of the rockets. Elon is an engineer at heart and that's where and how he works best. Another one, he's obviously skilled at all different functions, but certainly what really drives him and where his passion really is, is his role as chief engineer. Another one, Elon and the propulsion department are leading development of the SpaceX engines, particularly Raptor. Another one, Elon is brilliant. He's involved in just about everything. He understands everything. If he asks you a question, you learn very quickly not to go give him a gut reaction. He wants answers that get down to the fundamental laws of physics. One thing he understands really well is the physics of rockets. He understands that like nobody else. The stuff I've seen him do in his head is crazy. Meanwhile, there's literally nothing occurring in this head on screen now at all. So back to the fake engineer who just shared his fake engineer projections. And obviously since he's a fake engineer, he doesn't know what he's talking about. With that out of the way, the fake engineer has just suggested that FSD version 14 will be better than human for sure, maybe two to three times, and that version 15 has a shot of being 10 times better, aka safer than a human driver, at which point it is G-fucking-G. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.